Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to a standard video here on the channel. With the next regional championship qualifier season or RCQ season being featured in the standard format, I think it's a good time to uh, maybe dive into a little bit more standard than I normally would because I do like playing in those tournaments in paper. And this is the deck that I've currently got my eye on for potentially getting for those RCQs. It is Azorius Midrange. So basically the premise of this deck is that you can be a little bit faster than the slow decks, a little bit slower and more powerful than the fast decks, and kind of adapt your game plan according to the matchup you are facing. It really gains the benefit of a great mana base, especially because Restless Anchorage is a great creature land, and so that's one of the best reasons to be blue-white, uh, as well as because you're a two-color mana base, you also gain access to Mirex, which uh, is a really nice late-game insurance mana base card as well. Uh, other Now to the main feature of the deck, you gain access to new cards from the uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan Spyglass Siren, which is a great one-drop that can get you a map token as well, and so it's evasive. Uh, there's Warden of the Inner Skies, which plays well with a lot of the token makers that you have, which we'll get to in a moment, as well as Subterranean Schooner. So the fact that it gets 10 main deck cards from the new set, no, 14 actually, uh, it, we're going to get to that in a second as well, but it gets a lot of cards from the new set in both the main deck and also in the mana base also is very cool because it means that uh, it's going to take longer for this deck to rotate out of standard, which is cool as well. But the schooner is a really good reason to play this siren. You get to just attack in. Uh, it's really re resilient to some forms of removal, which is nice as well, and just gets you a little bit of value as well as growing your potentially evasive creatures. Destroy Evil is a nice main deck answer to Shieldred. Uh, make Disappear just gives you a lot of flexibility in a lot of matchups. You do make some disposable tokens or 1-1s one -one sometimes, and so you can counter stuff even into the mid to the late game. Denik is just really strong. Just You get just a 2 for one built into the card because he can come back after he dies. And a 2-3 lifelinker is great as well. Uh, a good place to put counters from Schooner. And then in the 3-drop slot, you get Wedding Announcement, which is one of the best cards in Standard. Just gets you huge amounts of power and toughness or cards and then buffs your entire team. Just fantastic card and one of the main reasons to be playing white. Tidebinder is another fantastic card that's also from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It's really cool to use to shut off things like the Wandering Emperor from your opponents or Shieldred. You can turn it into just a 4-5 vanilla that doesn't have its triggers, so Tishana's Tidebinder is really, really strong. And then Wandering Emperor at the 4-drop slot, good in the matchups where you need to like kill their, kill their attacking creatures or just like pressure your opponents by flashing this in and start making tokens. And then you gain Virtue of Loyalty, which is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Vigilance guy that also gives you a late-game win condition, so really, really strong there. The sideboard... Uh, I, I am still figuring it out uh, how where exactly each card fits, but you've got Invasion of Gobicon. I think it's good in matchups where you need to like be able to potentially like mess with your opponents, like sweepers, or you need to know what they're going to be playing, like if they have counter spells. Um, but I am still figuring this one out. I haven't quite sideboarded this one in yet uh, in my matches, but I think it's a it's a solid uh, addition to the sideboard, and uh, I trust that the people that are building this deck. This is a v relatively stock version of the list that I have found based on like looking at a few lists and figuring out which ones seem relatively standard. And this one, this is a card that gets featured a lot in sideboard. So it definitely has a place. Just figuring out where that is is uh, going to take some testing. Disdainful Stroke, just you want this in the matchups where they have late game cards. Uh, generally, like if they only have like one four mana card, you don't really want this. But if they have consistently expensive cards, then Disdainful Stroke is excellent. Negate is for the matchups where you just need extra counter magic against sweepers or uh, your opponent's uh, strong, I mean, there's a lot of reasons you'd want negate versus like something like extra disdainful strokes. Just if you want extra counter magic, but they don't have a ton of expensive spells, or you just need to bring in all of your counter magic, negate is just really good. Knockout blow is for the aggressive matchups. Elspeth smite also for the aggressive matchups. Get lost is like another answer to shieldrids or planeswalkers in the matchups where they maybe don't have tons of uses for the map tokens. Also, just if you want extra answers to shield, or this is a good card to bring in. Decage's Welcome, just a nice sideboard value card. And then Sunfall is, again, you, if you think the board is going to be getting wide, then this is a really nice option to help clean things, uh, clean things up. Anyway, that is the deck tech. Let me know if you have any questions about it or any feedback, but let's get to the matches. I'm going to be playing three matches in this video, so let's get started. Welcome to the round. We have a great hand here. We have either... One drop, two drop, three drop, or one drop, two drop, two drop, three drop. I think we'll leave with the Spyglass Siren, though. We are on the draw, but we have perfect mana. I think this is the best turn one play. Play this later. Because this is def definitely going to hit them, and this is more of a mid-game play, I think. Playing against Grixis. Okay, a bit of a ramp action, sure. 
Yeah, there's no reason to really care which order I play these in. take a bit of damage from this. Still just gonna lead with my guns here. Okay. Shieldred can just sit there. Whoa. They're playing some meld action. Interesting. I'm probably going to know I have Wandering Emperor. But... Yeah, I'm still just gonna go for basic plays. Keep making my one ones. I can flash this in, make a one one, a two two samurai. I could just hard cast this, or I could make the two two this explore. Okay, that's gonna make it hard to kill Shieldred. my people what do they have six mana for that they can't use I can just flash in both of these I can play this explore scry I think I'm gonna do that on to the denic because maybe I can get a big lifelink hit in don't want that guy. Now oh, I can block the Mishra if they attack with it. Show them how we greet our enemies. I don't think I actually benefit from attacking that much with this guy, so I'm just going to not attack, and I'm going to play this guy. Because I really want to scry and maybe find uh, Destroy Evil. Don't want that. I put myself in a bad spot against removal. I don't let myself jump block, but I think scrying is still good. Yeah, these lands are not going to help me out. Oh yeah, and this thing makes a 1-1. Perfect. Now I have this guy that can block shield right if it attacks, that they have this thing. Dragon. Oh no. Oh dear me. Wait, they can't. Yes, Denik! Oh, that's so huge. They wanted to get their Phyrexian Dragon Engine to meld, but I stopped them. <laughs> At least I think I stopped them. They can get a creature from me. They can get a Warden or a Tishana's Tidebinder. Wow, they milled three copies of this thing? Oh no. Wait, they still get it back? How? Uh, I guess it's not targeting. Well, that's unfortunate. I 
So this thing flips. Uh, they choose three. I'll lose my hand. Deal, they'll deal three. They'll destroy my planeswalker. Oh my gosh, this is so bad for me. Oh no. I needed counter magic for that big spell, I guess. Well, shucks. Um... Hmm. This thing's gonna be a 9 9, so I want my guys to help block it. Make another creature. Keep watch for intruders. All my guys are gonna untap anyway. That's not useful anymore. Okay. Okay, team. I know that the dragon engine is coming. But we have a resolute fighting force. Oh no, what did this guy do? Oh no! They're getting back dragons from their graveyard? This is turning into a slugfest. But they can't cast... I don't understand how Denic works. What? I guess they can't target it with spells or abilities, but they can still use them. It's so confusing. They're gonna choose to make me discard my hand. Maybe they'll deal three to me. They're gonna make me discard two, almost certainly. Okay. Have much to learn. Okay. Six four. They have this flyer guy. Even if they have a fatal, I guess there's not fatal push. Great, great. Yep, yep. Uh -huh. Well. Yeah, that's going to be good against Shieldred. Coming in hot. This guy has vigilance. Oh my gosh. He does it all. I totally forgot. Because he gains vigilance, right? Okay. Got a massive board state.
They have this plaza. Okay. Oh, I get to investigate. Nice. I think I'm going to win this game. I wonder how this works. So I'm going to hold full control just to see. Draw. That triggers. I'm going to try to counter the trigger. Make it lose death touch and stuff. Next. Oh, I should have tapped some more stuff. Uh, well. 5, 10, 15, this guy, this guy, this guy. trying to end this game before something weird happens. I could have hit them for an extra point of damage with by tapping these three. Maybe my Denic was more valuable and I shouldn't have done that, but... What a weird game. Don't really want that. See what we find if we find a tap land or something. Okay. Well, we have about a billion lethal attackers. Wow. Okay. I've never seen this card. Dragons cost one less. When dragons enter, you can have Sarkon become a copy of it. Okay, well. That was a heck of a game. Really showcased the late game power of our deck. I think we want Negate for sure, knowing that they have Breach the Multiverse. But we only saw one copy. Kind of a Grixis -y Dragons list. I think we'll definitely want... Disdainful Stroke and Negate, probably. Negate is dicier, because we only really saw that one spell. So I think we'll have to just bring in our Disdainful Stroke and use the Make Disappears wisely. Invasion of Gobicon is also really good against those like random expensive cards. Destroy Evil is great in this matchup. Get Lost. Oh, I never know when I want to get lost. Probably here, though. They have some, like, big four drops. I can get a big tempo advantage by killing them. And then I can bring in... Why is this so small? Yeah, I can bring in Invasion of Gobacon, potentially. Non-land card for my opponent's hand. Yeah, I think this is more for, the like, the tracks and matchups, but... Well, Denik didn't do much. I guess Denik did a lot. It gained me a lot of life at the end there. Wedding announcement is really good. So they just have, like, pretty aggressive game plan. This can deal with those guys. Mm hmm. Hmm. Sideboarding is tricky. I think Schooner's going to be kind of hard to use. And Tidebinder's going to be kind of hard to use. Basically, when I'm on the defensive, I don't think I'm going to be able to attack them as easily. Like, if they just play their 3-3s three and 4-4s, four four my Schooner won't be able to attack as easily. Maybe I should have sideboarded out some of my 1-1 one -one flyers. 
Okay, well, we can keep this, I think. That was a really good draw. Maybe I should have just played the Restless Anchorage. Also, now that I'm seeing them not do anything on their turn, it does kind of fill me with confidence that maybe I can just be the beatdown in the matchup. I'm just worried when I see 3-2 Hasters and stuff. Yep. Oh, that's not great for me. Yeah, that's an okay draw. Crew this. So I think I'll Tidebinder this guy. Oh, gosh. Yeah, this Tidebinder plan is okay, maybe. So they whiffed. And they missed a land drop. Well, that's good for me. Does that mean they can just jam this, kill their thing? And then start going. Okay. Yeah. This is a, okay. The card came and tapped. Okay. Goodbye, Wandering Emperor. This is a neat card. The Warmonger kind of has a lot of deck building restrictions in it. Oh, come on, Arena. Don't crash on me, man. Okay, we're back. Didn't have that much time to think about my play, because I just kind of had to go. I regret everything. I probably should have uh, just held up my schooner to block their 3-4. Ugh, man. This guy is annoying. My gosh. Lots of land being drawn. Gosh darn it! So I draw another card. Okay. So I can make a 2 2, or I can just make a Mirix token. Gosh, I have six, seven cards in my hands. Oh my gosh. They also have seven cards in their hand. They're just drawing all their their whole deck. Oh no, the Dracosaur. Okay, so I'm going to make a Virtue of Loyalty token. I 
I can fire up the anchorage. Hmm. So I fire up the anchorage. One, two, three. Crew this thing. An anthem for three, six, eight. They block this guy. They take two, three, four, five. Gosh, I think that's probably good enough. And then I'll crew with this. We can ditch the Denik. Okay. Could have also gone for like an Igonjo angle there. I also keep thinking I'm going to get a 1-1 one -one from this, but I'm attacking with more guys, so obviously I draw a card. Yeah. Dicey. I think I got him, though. I am now less certain that I have, as I said, got him. If they attack with their 3-2, I've got them. Or if they, if they attack with anything, I've got them, I think. Unless their treasure gives them something to do. Okay, so can I fire up both of these? I have three. No, I cannot. No, I can. Three, four, five. Yep. Boom. Creature lands are so good. Oh my gosh. Can't believe we got there. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Nice victory here for the deck. I'm still not 100% sure I sideboarded correctly. I will say that I didn't really feel the need for tide binders, so I think sideboarding those out was pretty okay. But uh, Warmonger, I might, maybe should have sideboarded in some of the Elspeth's things on the draw against them. But yeah, still learning the ropes with the deck, but still, this is that was a good match. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. Here we go. Easy keep. We got one drop, two drop, three drop on the play. Pretty much the ideal start for this deck, I'd say, and then a destroy evil if they have shielded. Or something else that's scary. Cool sleeves. I think this deck is really cool. It's got a lot of strong cards, lots of decision making with explorers. It's got creature lands, which I love. Very cool deck. Denik is a pretty cool card. Gosh. Denik has like the clean city streets and then it's just like completely in shambles when he's a ghost. Okay, Swamp. We'll chip in. Opponent, slow and meticulous. If they play cut down, I'm pretty happy. 
Like this, that seems kind of like what they might have. Yeah. I don't think I can really not play Denik there, because... I don't know. They could just not have it. Like, what are my other options? Do nothing. So their deck almost certainly has Shieldred. I think you can almost assume every black deck is going to have Shieldred. Wedding Announcement is even a complicated card, because sometimes you're not sure if you want to get the extra 1-1, one, one, or get the extra... Uh, get the extra 1-1, one, one, or get the card draw. I mean, usually you want the card draw if you can get it, I think. Virtue of Persistence, sure. I think we're going to get back Denik here. Haven't seen many creatures, so I think we are just going to play the Odawara. Probably going to end up playing both. It's funny because in my head this always is like a 2-1. I don't know why. It's like, oh, it's a 3-2. It's like nice because it's a 2-3 and then a 2-1. So we're going to stop on our upkeep because if they play Shieldred, we'll want to kill it. Never mind. Trespasser, sure. I always think this has menace for some reason. It doesn't. Just normal run of the mill card. Play my creature land that they know about. I could have explored too. Like onto the Denic or something. Or tried to get this guy into 3-3. Three, three. Guess that's probably an error. We'll do a little pump fake. Might as well triple block, I think. Glad I kept the Igonjo. So I will get a clue token too. Hit me up with that clue, Denik. I like Denik a lot. Denik is a really cool card. One of the reasons I like this deck is because I get to play Denik. Draw in response. Stop my upkeep in case I draw another destroy evil. Schooner. Yep. It's going to be hard to beat the Shieldred. I have four Tishana's Tide Binders, though, which are good draws against it. And one more Destroy Evil. And... Yeah, those are the main answers. Okay. 
Hmm. If they have a single kill spell, this just works out so badly for me. I'm taking the credit for you. I'm gonna crew and then sacrifice the schooner. Because then I think I have lethal. I guess not. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. Because this thing makes the schooner a 4 or 5. I forgot that this thing was gonna make this a 4 or 5. That was just so unnecessary. I forgot about my own wedding announcement. Despite the fact, I was like, oh, this is like plus two power. It's way better. Okay. I was going to crew the schooner anyway to keep my Denik alive, so that's good. It's daytime. Huzzah. Are they dead on board? Four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so I'm not going to bother countering that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hope that I can hit a spell in my top two. Come on, spell. No! I'm so unlucky! <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, I guess I will still just go all out at them. Gosh darn it, strategy. Oh, strategy. Thou art a fickle creature. Oh, man. <laughs> no! We just needed a spell! I think we're still in good shape. We're taking six from this, going to five. I have two creature lands now. I'm going to discard the Tide Tidebinder, I think. Gosh. That's so funny. I was so close! Explore B like that. Sometimes you win the flip, sometimes you lose the flip. It's not really a flip, though. You're definitely favored to hit a spell most of the time. Like a slight majority of the time. Oh, they were dead to my creature lands. Let's go, creature lands! Okay, so... They have... Trespasser, Duress, Children. So there's like a mono-black deck. Um, well... Not really in the market of keeping counter spells in, other than the Make Disappears. My deck feels really good in this matchup. I don't know. I really like Decajus Welcome, just grind through their discard spells... And I kind of like get lost against the Shieldreds and the um, potential Lilianas. This card's really good against Planeswalkers. Wandering Emperor is good against them. What do I not like here? I mean, I kind of like everything is the thing. I think Schooner's good still. I could cut like Two Spyglass Sirens, two Schooners, if I'm getting grindier. They have Duresses, so my counter spells are probably worse. I'm just going to cut out my counter spells, because those are the sorts of cards where when they know about it, it's worse. They'll make this appear is probably still good on the draw. I don't know. I'm just bringing in some extra removal, some stuff that I can top deck, because it feels like they're trying to get me into top deck mode, and that's where... I mean, counter spells are still pretty decent in top deck mode, but they're bad top decking when you have... Um, this is a good hand. They're bad top decks when you they have a Liliana in play. I don't know. I'm still learning the deck, obviously. This is why you practice and get reps in. But I do really like it. It's really fun. And I do recommend that it. it's it's quite powerful as well. There's a lot of decision making, lots of interesting lines. You get to play with some of the best cards in standard, like wedding announcement. 
I will definitely be trying this deck a lot in the future, I think. As like a potential deck to, to build for events. Ooh, demo field. That's cool. Go for the throat. Takes me down. I guess you always want to wait on this in case they want to cut cut down your guy. All the Murexes in the world. I really hope they duress me. That'd be really funny. They're playing white mana? Oh my gosh. They were color screwed that whole time. Well, we will get to draw a card and we can bring back our Denic. And Restless Anchorage isn't even as good anyway here. So we'll get to draw another card. The wedding announcement. Gosh, I did not realize they were color screwed that whole time. I thought they were playing some weird mono black deck. I mean, they had like six swamps in play. The thing about standard is it's often about like recognizing patterns of like, okay, in this matchup, you want to do this. In this matchup, you want to sideboard in these cards, and this is your game plan. And figuring out your game plan in each matchup, as well as like what your optimal deck build is going to be based on the matchups you expect to face, is kind of what standard is to me. And so, uh, I will take action. I will get a planes. But I think that it's it's good to have uh, it's good to get some practice for. Oh, they have. Why did they do that first? But it's that's why I think practice is really important in, in standard in particular because you kind of need to figure out what your game plan is. So I can play this and this and this. That's going to be. I already have one of those, and so I'd rather draw something else, I think. Because I already have, like, the next two turns planned out where I can go this and then tap the five-mana version. Not that this card's bad, but I'd rather draw, like, a removal spell for when they sh slam shield right here. This card's really good against me. I guess they're just splashing the planes to cast the second half of this sometimes. Because Path of Peril is really good as a sideboard card against me. Maybe I should bring in Negates just for that. I'm just going to jam this. I could, like, fire up the Anchorage. Goodbye. Yeah, I still think it's worth playing this. Because then it'll just make my Restless Anchorage really good, which I really like. So what you do with the Anchorage is then you can fire up Anchorage, attack them, and then it untaps on your end step, and then you can use that to make a Murex token. That's my math, I think. So it's three, if we could bring this guy up, and then it'll untap, and then I'll have the three mana to make this thing, which is pretty much exactly what it's about. Yeah, so they're just splashing white mana. They just need it for the one path of peril. And it is worth doing this now, because then I get the extra counter on it. Because I wasn't going to get the counter before, I was just going to get the 2-2. Two, two. Come on, Mirex, let's go. Auto Tapper doesn't really care that much. It's not a huge deal there, anyway. Maybe I should have pumped up the other guy. I don't want that. Because that way I could have attacked past a Shieldred. 
I like kind of having them the same size. But now I miss out on an attack. They're taking down my Murex. They probably should have taken down the Murex last time. They took out like a demo field or something. They took, I mean, they took out like a Seachrome Coast. Wow, I'm out of basics. Uh oh. I think we got him. <laughs> Scrybug! I scribed that card away. Just having lands do stuff makes me so happy. It's like one of my favorite things in Magic when my lands are useful like that. Just get the win, I think. Unless they draw another Path of Peril into some, like, miraculous sequence of draws. Yes! Oh, that was satisfying. What a win! I didn't miss the Make Disappears at all in that top deck mode scenario. They just had a bunch of lands anyway. Let's go! See you folks in the last round. I, eh. Yeah, I think this will be my last round playing with the deck for this video. But yeah, see you folks there. Welcome to another round. We are on the play. We have Siren into this, into a Tidebinder. Sure. Turn one Siren is just nice. I mean, just when you have like one, two, three with this deck, I feel like mulliganing in, in the dark is just wrong. Especially if it's like cards you don't mind playing, one, two, three. <sighs> Tidebinder is really sweet. Just does a lot of stuff. Oh my gosh, what a rip off the old top of the deck. Make them fear, make disappear. So they're playing a dismal backwater. Okay, so blue black or Esper or something. Do they have make disappear? Is the question. Question of the hour: Do they have make disappear? Trying to draw my card. Nice. What are they working with? They just had nothing. Oh, they're playing some Esper build. I'll play this, and then I can make the 1-1 one -one if I don't want to use Tidebinder. Or I could just flash in Tidebinder as a 3-2. Kind of expect this matchup to go long, though. So I kind of might need all the cards in my hand. Okay, now I'm definitely not just jamming that. It's actually totally fine. Let me show you. Their card is now not going to be that useful. I have a Make Disappear, which can counter basically any removal spell that would kill the Tidebinder. They are on a budget build, I think, with the gain lands. It's maybe not a super accurate reflection of the matchup. But, you know, everyone starts somewhere. And if you're playing at f &M, there are going to be players that have decks like this. Okay, so we're going to just start by playing an island. We will take out the Emperor in case they have removal. And if they have a second Emperor, I'll just counter it. Still have much to learn. I like being able to play this Flash game a little bit. They just make a 1-1 one -one that can't block. Okay, I'm okay with that. I am a okay with that. I've been poisoned. Hmm. 
choosing every mode. I think I will just counter that and win the game instead. My mind was like, I can probably win if they play that. Yeah, okay. We got the win. Okay, farewell. So they're more of a controlling deck, maybe. So maybe they aren't just going for a budget build. Um, so against Esper Control, I definitely want to cage as welcome, disdainful strokes, and negates. What's bad? Um, I like V- I mean, vehicles aren't good against farewell, but I- I don't know if they're gonna be playing stuff that destroy evil is good against. Um... Though, I do like kind of like having answers to Shieldred, because they're probably- they, they might have it. I think it's like sacrilege almost to cut wedding announcement. The card is just absurd. Um, they're going to have removal, so Warden gets worse. And then I'll just cut one of each of those. Because Schooner gets worse when you cut your one drop, guys. Um, and also when you're trying to build more counter magic -y. I don't know. I kind of like this strategy. It's still kind of just my own approach, though. Yeah, this is a good hand. Against Esper Control. I don't think it's the Esper mid-range builds that are playing Rafine and stuff, based on my early analysis of what the cards they were playing. I don't think it was a random budget build. You don't need to really do that a lot of the time on Arena when it comes to gain lands and stuff. I'm just going to hold up my Counter Magic slash my Virtue. Yeah, like they've got plenty of cards. We'll go for this. Um, we'll get this thing going. I should have attacked first. If they have Nate disappear, that's fine. I suspect they don't have Shieldred in their deck, or maybe they do. I have no idea, really. I just assume that it's not really the sort of creature that they just don't. They seem like a relatively creatureless deck. Though Esper Control is less popular than Esper Midrange. Okay, Schooner time. I like Schooner against typical decks, but their farewell is just exile it anyway. I'm not going to fight over a Memory Deluge, especially not the flashbacked version. Got a 2 2. Perfect. I think I'm going to do this. Because then my wedding announcement draws me a bunch of cards. Maybe I'm still supposed to just play wedding announcement. Also, maybe Takesha's Welcome isn't great in this matchup where they have Farewell. I'm definitely just letting them kill this. I just don't want them to farewell me here. Okay, so they do have Shieldred, good to know. Maybe it's a post board thing. Drawing extra cards here. It's pretty good. Farewell, obviously, is good against this. No! The 
took me down. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So next turn I can play this and this. I still think I'm just jamming. So I can draw my card off wedding announcement. I think drawing the cards is more valuable in a world where farewell exists. I will play the schooner though. Because then next turn I can play this thing maybe. They flash back deluge. No, they just play a normal deluge. Okay. Maybe I'm supposed to hold my schooner against farewell possibilities. Okay, so we did get that to work out at least a little bit. Because now we get to resolve Virtue of Loyalty and play another Mirax. And we need to activate our guy. Get a counter on him. That's a cool play you can do. Shieldred, sure. Yep, I will draw. So I can make, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can do this, attack them, and then still make two guys. Well, that's not great. Not great at all. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Yeah, so I don't have it now, right? One, two, three to make one guy. Ditch Denik. Play Denik? Sure. That'll make my Ganjo cheaper in the future. Keeping an answer for Shielded is when it's probably their only creatures. Probably correct still. Huh. Why are they playing game lands in their deck? Je ne comprends pas. Hmm. I think I can't. I'm just going to play this. Attack them for nine in the air. No! Okay. Attack them for seven in the air. Explore on Denik. Oh my gosh, we're still in this. We have a lethal attack next turn. If they don't find something. The power of restless anchorage. Yeah, that I, I kept in tide binders, so that's a good answer to Shieldred. I didn't play the wedding announcement because I don't want to draw. Didn't want to draw extra cards. I wanted to threaten some damage. Though I guess, yeah, because it just felt better to get the actual damage through. Wow, they exile their own Shieldred. 
that's good for me. Definitely attacking. That was their only answer to survive. It's crazy. Play this land. Play this. They have it in the gate. Okay. And then I will end turn because this way I can crew up this one and then use my map. They probably have a second. Oh my gosh, we got there with the Anchorage plays. Oh my gosh, they might need to find a game. Oh my, what do they even have as an out? So here's what we have to do. We actually have to, if they play an untapped land here, we have to make sure we crew in the right order because they could make a sacrifice one. So we have to crew this one up first. Not crew it up, power it up first. Because now if they have shield or edict, we don't lose. Because they can make a sack, a creature. I guess they could also have go for the throat. Yes! Woo! Got the win! I, I did not think we had that one when they had, like, all those deluges. But yeah. Nice little run with the deck. Got to face off some very different matchups. And uh, I feel like I'm getting a lot more comfortable with the deck already. But yeah, this definitely isn't typical uh, Esper mid-range, which is why I thought this was a particularly interesting match. The Shieldred is their, like, only creature. Really made sideboarding interesting. But yeah. Um, I'll uh, see you folks in the wrap-up. So, welcome to the wrap-up. We got to play three really cool matches. We played against Grixis Dragons, a mono-black, basically, control deck, and then an Esper control deck, and we managed to defeat all three of those. It was very interesting uh, seeing how the, like, kind of deck was able to win in the late game, thanks largely to this Restless Anchorage, and then one of those games due to the Mirex. Just having lands as really, really, as like a late game insurance policy when both players are in top deck mode seemed really, really good. And I really like Restless Anchorage is just a huge incentive to play this deck. Other than that, some key performers, the Tidebinder really did some cool stuff, shutting down Planeswalkers, shutting down Shieldreds in particular. Wedding announcement was fantastic. And then make disappear and uh, like some of the instant speech shenanigans we were able to get to up to with the like, virtue and make disappear was pretty good. Virtue also gave us a lot of late game inevitability, uh, especially against the Grixis Dragons matchup. I'm still figuring out the sideboard. Uh, the disdainful strokes and negates definitely seemed good. I like knockout blow for the more aggro matchups. Smite, smite was interesting because I wasn't sure when to bring it in, but I think it's more for the aggro decks. And then uh, like we brought in get lost, we brought in Decay's welcome, so we brought in a lot of the stuff that was meant for those more controlling matchups. Maybe Invasion of Gobacon would also be good in the controlling matchups if they have more, like, creatures to get rid of, or, yeah. Because it's any non-land, so you can just get rid of counter spells and stuff, too, or sweepers. But, yeah, I think the deck is really cool, really solid, and I definitely anticipate playing more of it going forward. I think it's a, a nice choice, potentially, for RCQ season. If you did make it all the way to the end of this video, in the comment section down below, leave has hashtag anchored to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video because this really was, if you're thinking of like a relay race, this was the nice anchor runner that often carried us across the finish line. So hashtag anchored to let me know you made it all the way to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future and we'll talk to you next time.